Awesome. All right, let's get started. Um, thank you all for joining us. I'm really excited to welcome you to Shark and Hour 2, the second one. We came up with that title all by ourselves because we're really, really, really creative. Um, as you know, we did one of these uh, July 24th, which is clearly somewhere on this slide, but you can't see it. Um, and it was so good, and it was so big, and it was much bigger than any of the shark owners we've had in previous years. So we wanted to just keep it going. Uh, shark Week is in three days. Um, so we wanted to gather all of our shark living uh, online communicators together to talk about how to use Shark Week to promote saving sharks. Um, a little bit of housekeeping before we get started. Uh, you can use the hashtag Sharkinar to live tweet this conversation. Um, that is a hashtag that is great for us to talk to each other uh, and share ideas about how to do this awesome work that we do. Um, I don't imagine that Sharkinar is going to register at all during Shark Week, um, but it is a great in-network hashtag to use. Um, We've put together a Twitter list of all the people who signed up for the Sharkinars. Um, it isn't updated with everybody on this list just because it was a little bit last minute, but I will do that today. So you should click on the bit.ly Sharkinar 14 list to follow that Twitter list of all the people who come on these phone calls and share their ideas. And then we're going to also take some live notes in uh, Google Doc bit.ly slash sharkinar 14 notes, and we're going to build off the notes that we took two weeks ago. Um, you can use the chat function in ReadyTalk to uh, send us your questions. You can also raise your hand in uh, the participant window so you can let us know that you'd like to speak and we can call on you. And then uh, you can unmute your line by hitting star 7. Um, as I said, we are recording this and we'll send out the link to the recording and the slides afterward. There's already a recording of the first one on our website. Um, so the first thing that we need to acknowledge is that Shark Week, while very, very big, is, is also competing with this other shark thing that happened to air last week. Um, and we want to make sure that you all know that we will be talking about Sharknado. We've updated our our stats, um, and we have a little, little bit of a sense of um, how that registered and how it might compare with Shark Week this year. Um, so don't you worry. We have Sharknado data. Um, what we're going to do is quickly go through who we are, what we do at Upwell. Um, even though most of you know who we are. Um, and then we're going to talk a little bit about what Shark Week is, give our state of the shark of the shark conversation online, um, talk through some tips and tricks on joining in the Shark Week conversation, and then we want to devote a big chunk of time to hear from you and see how your campaign plans are coming along. With that, I'm going to turn it over to Rachel Whitinger, our fearless leader to talk about Upwell. Hello, this is Rachel. Um, and just to kind of ground what Upwell does, um, we are super into the idea that the ocean is our client. Um, and as such, we view everybody on the phone as a super exciting collaborator and influencer and someone who is um, helping to make the ocean more famous on the Internet. Um, thanks for joining today. And we've got a bunch of people on the phone. Um, that's me. I was in Florida. I kind of miss the beach. I want to go back. Um, Ray's on the phone. Matt is also on the phone. And awesome Andrew um, has joined us too today. That is the Upwell crew who's on the phone today, in case you need to imagine what we look like. This slide is to help you do that. But that's not all. Um, there are a lot of awesome people on the phone. Um, this is a combination of people who were who joined us for the last webinar. Um, there's whoa, sorry, excuse me, the last shark in our, um, and people who are on the phone today. Um, we've got lots of people involved in Shark Week and in, in this informal way that we have going. Uh, and this year there's so many people involved in the Shark in our that we couldn't actually fit all the logos on one slide. 
So this is the extra slide of more logos that did not fit. Otherwise, they were too small. <laughs> this is the first year we've had to go to two slides of logos. So we are way excited um, to be working at this intersection of really cool conservation organizations, aquariums, um, all the people who just love sharks, independent scientists and journalists, um, surfers and scuba divers, uh, and the media. Um, the, oh yay! The Monterey Bay Aquarium is checking in the chat. We're excited you're here too. Um, so we think that Shark Week is a really neat opportunity because it brings together this big fan conversation of people who love sharks um, with this big media spectacle that um, Discovery Channel puts on. And there's an opportunity for all of us as evangelists and people who care about the ocean um, to just take huge advantage of this. Um, and the idea is that if we assume that we can do many-to-many -many communications and not just one-to-one -one, um, and work together, that we can have this big impact thinking of ourselves as a big team ocean. Um, and Equal exists to help give tools kind of a weather report, or you may be familiar with the Tide report, um, our action newsletter, that we feel like if people online who care about the ocean have better tools and they know more about kind of the, the larger lay of the land or lay of the waves, as the case may be, that we can be more effective. Um, and to do that, we count up social mentions of things we care about. Today, we're counting social mentions of sharks especially. And we think that every time somebody posts a piece of online content about the ocean, um, that it counts for something, that they're staking a little piece of their social capital, of their online reputation, um, to, to associate it with an issue that can sometimes be controversial, um, and that that's valuable. And you, we can quantify it like you quantify donations or petition signatures, um, and that that effort helps to do a bunch of things, build political will, make these issues part of a national conversation. Um, so we count up all those social mentions. We take a note of when spikes happen. We create a baseline so that um, it helps us to set our campaign goals, and we share that information so other people working on digital campaigns can know about it. And then we do big special research for when we know there's going to be a big spike. And Shark Week, we know for sure, is a big spike. And we do all this in service of the idea about should you go out and surf today? Should you do your online campaign? Um, and the overwhelming answer is next week, you should definitely surf. Shark Week is huge, um, and it's, it's not maybe not a good week for vacation. Uh, so please keep working next week. Please keep tweeting and Facebooking and doing what you do next week. It's really important. And to give a little bit of a scale to that, um, in our first year in 2012, we built these big keyword sets to quantify the social mentions in eight different ocean conversations. Um, marine protected areas is really tiny. It's about 50 social mentions a day, five zero. Um, overfishing is a little bigger. And sharks is much bigger. Shark conversations about 30,000 social mentions a day, or was in 2012. And then we saw this. Um, there's a big spike that goes right off the page. It goes up to 180,000 social mentions a day. Um, and that's when we had our first giant aha as a little tiny organization that Shark Week is kind of a big deal. Uh, so to reiterate, yes, you should definitely come play next week on the Internet during Shark Week. And I know that lots of you already have plans too, but just wanted to give a little broader context. And now I will turn it over the reins to Matt, who can talk about the state of the shark conversation. Thank you, Rachel. Um, so I'm going to take you through uh, the state of the shark conversation on the Internet. And the first thing you need to know, if you didn't already, is that the Internet loves sharks. Um, based on that black graph and the continuing monitoring that we've been doing, um, sharks are one of the largest ocean conversations anywhere on the Internet. Um, there's about 50,000 mentions per day of sharks. Um, that's excluding things like the San Jose hockey team. Uh, and the conversation is pretty diverse. Uh, the Save Sharks sort of conservation part of the, uh, of the pie is a relatively small 
uh, slice, but a um, very important one. Um, and we believe that we can use Shark Week to increase that part of the conversation. Uh, and Shark Week is the Super Bowl or World Cup of the ocean. Um, it is a huge opportunity to get out there and reach people who love sharks but may not be in contact um, with our organization uh, during the rest of the year. So the thing about the influencers of the overall sharks conversation is that they are not always um, shark specialists. Sometimes they are more like ocean generalists. And uh, we always want to have a big tent to go where the people are and bring expertise to conversations that can benefit from it. So Shark Week, if you're not familiar with it, is a really big event um, in terms of cable television. Um, Shark Week is one of the few uh, moments that really like breaks through into American popular culture um, as it concerns the ocean. And people have watch parties. Uh, 53 million people watched it last year. This year there's going to be 12 all-new shows. Um, well, semi-all-new. They, they often riff on, on themes. But um, uh, there's also going to be a, a nightly uh, live uh, talk show. Um, they often show tweets on screen while they're doing the shows. And these are always opportunities to, uh, to engage with people. Um, Shark Week itself is engaging with some NGOs and some nonprofits. Um, the conservation partners this year are ghost fishing. Um, we work on uh, these ghost nets that drift around the ocean. Um, Oceana and One World One Ocean will be pumping out some amazing multimedia content um, that's always worth sharing about sharks. And Shark Week itself starts at 8 o'clock Eastern on Sunday the 10th and goes through uh, the following Saturday. So Shark Week is super big. Um, it's the, like I said, the biggest spike in the shark conversation all year. Um, it's also one of the biggest, it's the biggest spike in anything related to the ocean on the internet of the whole year. Uh, and it's getting bigger. So um, last year there were over 2.7 million online uh, posts about sharks, uh, or about Shark Week specifically, um, and the conversation primarily happens on Twitter. Uh, the Facebook number that you see there is only public posts. So there's um, a big um, slice of the conversation which is invisible because people are um, admirably setting their privacy settings on their, on their Facebook pages. Um, and the thing to know about this conversation is that it's a fan conversation. Uh, we actually went through and tried to characterize um, a big slice of that uh, conversation about Shark Week um, in an earlier time. And you find out that this is a yay sharks conversation. So while it's important that people know about shark finning, um, we might not want to lead with a picture of a bloody shark fin um, that sort of uh, pushes the vibe of a shark celebration. Um, and it's super important that people get that science and that conservation information, but we have to think about how we approach people to bring them into um, the save shark uh, conversation, which is much smaller than just the conversation about Shark Week. Uh, sorry to interrupt the uh, the drawing, but um, I think it's important when we when we look at such a big conversation online. It's, it's often easy to be like, but we're you know we're relatively small uh, small team ocean, um, and you know what can we really do when there's millions of people posting? Are we sort of yelling into the wind um, or into a Sharknado, as it were? Uh, but as uh, Rachel is hopefully <laughs> diagramming, um, when we looked at uh, over the last two years that we've been measuring this, when we looked at the slice of the pie that is about shark, uh, shark conservation and shark science, um, what we have affectionately called Team Ocean here, the Team Ocean um, conversation is actually growing faster than Shark Week is, which means that by working together, we really are accelerating um, the communication uh, efforts of the Save Sharks um, community. And if we keep this up one day, maybe we will be uh, an even bigger slice of the Shark Week um, conversation overall. Um, this represents more people um, involved in the movement to save sharks and more people involved in spreading actual science um, rather than uh, fake stuff, which we'll talk about later. And this is a this is a win for us. 
So we need to keep this momentum going and keep um, amplifying each other's efforts um, because when uh, sharks win, we all win. All right, so if you are going to use any one hashtag during Shark Week, we very much suggest that it be Shark Week. The hashtag, um, this is 30 days of data, um, and you can already see that Shark Week is uh, pack manning up the other hashtags um, that are being used. That will only continue. Shark Week will become by far the most dominant hashtag during the week. If you want to reach this big tribe of folks watching Shark Week, use the Shark Week hashtag. We also love to save Shark hashtag um, year round. Uh, every show on Shark Week has its own hashtag. Um, these are often uh, the name of the show um, with slight variations. And this is a graph from last year showing how um, the different shows sort of carried conversation um, on their day, and in some cases um, extending past it. Uh, Shark After Dark, which is that sort of dark green slice there in the middle, um, is the nightly uh, talk show. So you can see how it carries over from one day to the next. Um, and those of you with sharp eyes may have picked out um, the Megalodon hashtag. Uh, we will be talking about Megalodon, uh, infamous Megalodon, in just a moment. But first, if you are looking to uh, go with the data and spell Jotham in the quantitatively verified uh, way to do it, um, we highly, highly suggest that you go with Jotham with no E. Um, if you have reasons for doing it otherwise, roll with it. Just know that perhaps um, you are in the minority on this particular thing, uh, and this is the power of data. So last year, um, Shark Week led off its biggest night, which is always the first night, uh, with a fake documentary about a very uh, real shark that has been extinct <laughs> for a very long time. Um, they tried to fool a bunch of people. They actually succeeded in fooling a bunch of people, and um, we were not, I think I can speak for most of the people on this call and say we were not very happy about that. Um, we actually tried to quantify the backlash, and um, it, you know, on the first day it was about 10% of the posts um, were people who realized what was going on and, um, and tried to you know, say, hey, this is, this is a hoax documentary. Um, the backlash, while only 10%, was actually really important. Um, led off by, uh, by folks like Will Wheaton and uh, Nerdy Christie, that's her Twitter, hashtag, her Twitter handle, um, and some other uh, folks, some of whom have joined us on the Shark and Earth um, past or present. Uh, the backlash got attention, right? And so we started seeing ripple effects of coverage of these posts um, saying, like, you know, uh, Sharks are interesting enough without fake science. Um, and mainstream media started picking it up. And that sort of spread all over the Internet. Uh, just going to go through some of the coverage that it got. Everything from Gawker to CNN. Or maybe they're not that far apart, depending on your perspective. And all of this has led some people to ask, is there blood in the water in the Shark Week uh, universe? Um, there certainly is blood in the water in the Sharknado universe. We just had uh, Sharknado 2, second one, as um, this uh, alternative shark-themed uh, television event um, tries to muscle in on the action. Uh, Sharknado 2 just happened. These are some of, uh, some of the top tweets about it. Um, you can see Ocean Conservancy's post right there in the middle of five things. Shark Nato to the second one got right. I'm a fan of that one. Um, so people got in on the action. Greenpeace Live tweeted. Um, and the New York Mets got in on the action. Anyway, it was a big thing. Um, here's a graph of that big thing. The red line is Shark Nato uh, post. This is over the last 30 days. Shark Nato versus Shark Week. Shark Week is in blue. Um, and you're looking at that big spike uh, reaching almost 400,000 mentions a day. And you may be wondering, does that mean that Sharknado is like the new Shark Week? Well, if it's anything like last year, uh, Sharknado will be dwarfed by Shark Week. Um, the Sharknado uh, last year had about 350,000 mentions at, at peak. So this year was about 50,000 more. 
Um, I think uh, Shark Week this year is going to be even bigger, and Sharknado, while big, uh, is not coming for the king. So, is that your and, official prediction, Matt, that Shark Week is going to be big? Uh, that is, no, that's a very official prediction. Um, okay. And for those of you who are just looking for one slide to rule them all, um, remember that this is a yay shark conversation. This is a fan conversation, so keep it keep it in perspective as you uh, venture into these waters. Um, if you have one hashtag to use, do Shark Week. And remember that this is the biggest moment um, in the shark conversation of the year. And um, if it if it means that you need to rearrange your schedule a little bit in order to participate. Highly suggest doing that, and we've got some ways for you to uh, um, to dive in. Um, and um, with that, I'm going to pass it over to Ray. Thank you, Matt. Um, yay, data! Um, let's jump into what we should be doing with all this information. Um, we've put together a handy little cheat sheet. Um, unlike our first Sharpener, we actually have the correct dates on this one. Um, the updated version is on our website. Uh, we've also been tweeting it a lot. There's so many ways for you to get this. It's a schedule of all the shows during Shark Week. Um, our recommendations for when to tweet, obviously, if you can do it all, do it all. But this is evening hours, and we know that many of you have day jobs. Uh, your day jobs may or may not allow you to count these evening hours as work. Um, so if you're going to pick and choose, um, this is a great cheat sheet. It shows you all the um, uh, main hashtags. Got a little yay graph in there. Um, download it on um, the toolkit, which Rachel just put a link to in the chat window. Um, here's a few basic tips from Upwell, from watching and engaging in this conversation for several years. Um, on Twitter, set up uh, search columns in your uh, Twitter monitoring tool of choice. I use TweetDeck. Many people use HootSuite. Put in the hashtags. Follow the hashtags for the shows. Follow the hashtags for Save Shark, because then you can promote shark saving content. Uh, monitor what the conversation is doing, and Find humorous content to share that is um, not promoting bad science. Um, and as you see this content coming through on these streams, it's going to be coming in really, really quickly. Respond to celebration with celebration of people like sharks. Agree with them. Um, like sharks with them. Um, and just to go back to those evening hours, uh, a tip is be in mind when Shark Week is on the air. As much as you would love to be able to just put all your content out at 11 a.m. or schedule it for later in the evening, really the conversation is a living, breathing thing, and it's best to be online when everybody else is online, which is in the evening. Um, to that effect, we put together a little handy letter which you can um, download and print and give to your boss as is, or you can adapt it. But we really do think it's worth uh, talking to your boss if you work in ocean conservation or if you do have um, a 9 to 5 type of day job to see if, uh, if this can align with uh, your, your employer's uh, goals around this. And it's just a quick way to say, hey, I'm going to work uh, a little bit late in the evening and I might come in a little bit late. Um, echo your colleagues and amplify other campaigns. Again, we believe we are all in a big, big team, Team Ocean, and we're going to be far more impactful. We're going to reach far more people if we amplify each other. So uh, you might see an awesome piece of content like that, cool graphic that Ocean Conservancy made for Sharknado 2. Um, that's going to be even more effective if a ton of other people share it, and if Ocean Conservancy shares it 10 more times. I mean, let's just really echo and amplify as much as possible. Find good content and make sure it reaches more people. Um, reward your super followers. People who are really engaged with you, um, sh give them shout outs. Uh, it's going to encourage, kind of like watching Shark After Dark and seeing the little tweets pop up on the bottom of the screen. People want to be seen by, um, by people who have a big megaphone. Um, 
And then on Facebook, a lot of the same things apply, but as Matt mentioned, most of the conversation about Shark Week is happening on Twitter. Um, on Facebook, some of the content is going to be a little bit um, – going to have a bit of a longer tail. So you don't necessarily need to monitor the Facebook conversation while it's happening, but you can provide uh, visual content, for instance, that um, you post throughout the week that people can share and um, look at what other organizations are putting together and, and amplify each other. Um, ask your fans to like and share. Um, this goes for all the time. I mean, uh, there's never a reason not to ask for something that you want. So if you want people to share um, a specific image or if you want them to talk more about conservation, just ask them. And um, I think that's a great way to, to get a farther reach uh, and get more social mentions. Um, Facebook is really visual, um, and so share videos and pictures and make them simple, super, super, super simple. Um, don't do a highly complex infographic. Instead, just pull one little bit out of it if you've got one. Um, and images with text are great. We did some images um, last year and the year before that had really powerful quotes from um, survivors of shark encounters that were just basically saying, I really respect sharks. I was in their home. And, and these kinds of images, they put the quotes on top of these photographs of um, these surfers who are still surfing even after they've lost a limb. And that stuff was just so powerful to people, and it got shared really, really broadly. Um, so those kinds of visuals with, with powerful quotes, inspirational uh, conservation messages do very well on Facebook. Um, and in general, like uh, we've we've always said, respond to feedback. I mean, if, if you're getting a troll though, and that troll doesn't have much traction, and most of the messages you're getting are positive, don't spend all of your time fighting the trolls. Um, it's better to spend your energy promoting conservation and science. Um, to that effect, the way you can find this really awesome content, we've got a couple of twi uh, Twitter lists. I mentioned that we made a Twitter list of the people who signed up for the Shark um, and and that, that's a great one to follow. We've also made this Shark Week Super Tweeters list, which is everybody, um, the, the people who are the most active from last year's Shark Week conversation on, on Twitter, um, and we're able to generate conversations. So it's everybody including the Shark Week and Discovery Communications accounts to humor accounts, um, and uh, also conservation-oriented World Wildlife Fund and several others are on that list. So it's a kind of broad plot of who's really influencing this conversation broadly. And then we've also made a shark saving influencers Twitter list. Um, and that really is the most um, active uh, conservation and science-oriented Twitter users from last year's Shark Week. Um, I'm sure there will be so many new players in the game this year, and we are going to try to keep an eye on that and add people as we see them. Um, but if you want a quick way to just follow a bunch of people who are going to be promoting science during Shark Week, that's the Twitter list for you. And then some additional tips from last year, because uh, we had so many um, ideas come in through the Shark Inar and also a lot of feedback after Shark Week ended. Um, this is really taxing if you decide to live tweet more than one night, maybe the entire week. That's a lot of work just sitting there and reading and pulling things together and responding really quickly um, and being really, really deeply engaged and watching a show. It's really actually uh, it's quite taxing. Um, take care of yourself. Um, eat well. Drink water and Gatorade. Um, there's also a lot of really fun drinking games. I've totally done that. And I, I'm probably going to have a beer while I watch Alien Sharks on Tuesday. But um, do make sure that you get your sleep because it's a really, really intense week. And if you do it really well, then you're going to drain yourself a little bit. Um, engage with Discovery politely. Again, Discovery for every three or four incorrect, blatantly incorrect tweets. They are also promoting a lot of great uh, conser conservation messaging, and they have an enormous, enormous audience. Um, I think it's really important to bust myths and to be direct with them and to push back when they are being 
factually incorrect or promoting fear, but um, I think that it's, it's far more effective if you do that in a, in a polite way because then you're not the troll. They are. Um, be proactive with the media. Call, email, tweet reporters. Um, we've already started to see this happen. We, we shared this on the Shark and Hunter a couple weeks ago. We reminded people in a tide report a couple days ago that you can tweet directly at reporters and say, hey, if you need any uh, background information during Shark Week, I'm an expert on this. Please get in touch with me. Uh, you can write people emails and say, we're going to be watching shows. This is what we think is important. Upwell has written a bunch of emails to reporters to just basically say, hey, we really hope that you uh, start, if, if you cover Shark Week this year, you cover the conservation and science content, and we can connect you with a bunch of people who are really active on that. So be proactive. Reach out to people. Ask for what you want. Um, Use humor is a huge, huge one. Um, that um, uh, Shark Week is a lot easier to use humor because the whole thing is humorous. With Shark Week, um, I really think that uh, it's a bit more of a stretch to think of those really funny jokes. But like people, people will really be drawn to humor because this is a fan conversation. It's really fun for people to watch Shark Week. People like getting scared. Um, it, it's a, it's a uh, they watch because they like it. So if you can appeal to that happy, kind of humorous energy, then um, you're going to sort of seem as, as if you're part of their team as well. So um, we say hum use humor, get followers, share science, win. Simplifi it's a simplification, but it's one um, that works. And um, lastly, have content prepared for anticipated conversations. Shark, uh, Shark Week is airing a Megalodon special this year. It is pushed to later in the week, but it's happening, and it's going to be similar to last year. It's probably going to have a very, very, very weak disclaimer that shows for a 30 second of a second, and it's going to probably promote a lot of really incorrect stuff, and you can be prepared for that. Um, I know that David Schiffman, who wasn't able to join us today, but joined us a couple weeks ago. He's Why Sharks Matter on Twitter. He just posted this morning um, about uh, the Megalodon special, and he's got a he's been tweeting about it all day, and is saying Megalodon, Megalodon is is extinct. Um, so it's 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 important to look at the schedule. Think what what kind of content can we put together, a blog post, an image in advance, so we're not scrambling to do it during the conversation. Um, and as I see in the chat, we've actually got all of these t the tips and tricks and ideas and links all in our toolkit. So if you're sitting there thinking, "Oh my goodness, this is a lot of information," or um, I didn't write down that thing earlier. It's all there on our website. Just go to the toolkit, and um, and you'll be able to find it there. Um, so I want to just turn it back over to Rachel. We're going to facilitate a conversation about um, what you've learned and what you're planning to do during Shark Week. Hello. Hooray. Now that we have stuffed a whole bunch of information into your brains, um, we're going to try and take some out again. Um, we are super curious. We've got a lot of really amazing um, people on the call today. And we want to know what challenges you are dealing with. Um, any kinds of difficulties finding images, or how to deal with a tone of thin conversations, or what flavor Gatorade you should stock up on. Um, if anybody has got a challenge, go ahead and raise your hand, um, and we can take you off mute. Um, hit star 7 to take yourself off mute. Um, or you can type your challenge into the chat window, and I will read it out loud for you as a special service. Um, anybody who is still working on campaign plans and needs crazy ideas, now is your chance. What's your challenge? We'll figure out a way to solve it. You guys have it all figured out. No challenges whatsoever. All right. 
No, no immediate challenges coming up. You can interrupt at any point with challenges when you think of them. Um, and we're going to shift into talking about what campaigns you have in the works. Um, I know we've got a bunch of cool organizations on the line. Um, I see that um, another Rachel, Rachel Prokop, is on the line um, from Greenpeace. Um, Rachel, do you want to share a little bit about what Greenpeace is thinking about doing Shark Week and how we can help you out? Star seven to unmute. And a question in the chat from Melissa Varga. Um, have you thought about having an expert available uh, for a tweet chat to share the truth about shark conservation? Um, great question, Melissa. Um, and we think about that a lot. Um, and in part, that's the, um, the list that we've created. Um, Ray shared the list of shark science influencers earlier. Um, that's available in the toolkit. There's a few people that we have um, not quite on call to Upwell, but who we know from previous years are going to be really active during this conversation um, to help get science-based conservation messages out um, when the conversation is really hot online. Um, and so that's that's why we convene um, these um, shark runners to, to surface more of those and to let people know um, that those that the people on the shark um, influencer list, the shark science influence list, um, are vetted, and we know that they perform well under pressure um, when there's lots of chatter going on about television shows, and uh, Discovery Channel is uh, sharing facts <laughs> with air quotes around them. Facts like the megalodon still exists. Um, one other. Oh, go ahead. Um, one other thing that we learned this is Matt. One other thing that we learned from the first shark in our is that um, for particular shows, uh, there are organizations whose scientists are featured um, in some some of the better shows, um, and oftentimes those organizations will have uh, their scientists uh, live tweeting during the shows. Um, of course, a great way to find out about that is just to follow the uh, uh, the shark in our Twitter lists um, because. Uh, those tweets will be amplified. Um, but I know, for example, that, um, that Vicki from uh, uh, Ocean Research Foundation will be um, live tweeting uh, some, of their, or some of the organization scientists um, who are featured in the Alien Sharks show. So Alien Sharks is a great, um, it was actually started um, in response to a suggestion from the shark science community. Um, and so if the more that we can support that particular show, uh, the more helpful it is. And there also will be shark scientists um, will be weighing in as the show is, is going live. Thanks, Pat. And I know that we've got um, Jim Morton on the line from the Seattle Aquarium. Uh, we've got Caitlin from the Marine Conservation Institute, um, and Dan Burns from the Sierra Club, and Deb Castellana from Mission Blue. If anybody wants to hop in and um, share what campaigns you've got going on and how we can help you out, um, how we can help amplify those efforts. It's star seven to unmute, and I would love to hear from you. Hey, this is Caitlin from the Marine Conservation Institute. Hey, Caitlin. Um, if, I'm if I'm unmuted, just to be sure, uh, I just wanted to yeah. share with everyone that we are on our MPA Atlas project, which you can find at mpaatlas.org, putting together a separate layer on the map that just highlights um, our world's shark sanctuaries. And every sanctuary has a, a bit.ly short link that can be attached um, to a tweet or a Facebook post. So if you want to direct somebody when you're talking about you know, a particular um, area or a particular type of species to a sanctuary that might affect that area or species, you can link in and straight to the map and, and give people a good visual um, for sort of what we're talking about in terms of shark conservation. Cool. And how um, I'm on the site right now. How can I feel free to drop, drop the link in the chat? Um, is there a good way to, to find those quickly? Yes. So the layer's not up yet. It will hopefully be up tomorrow morning, um, and we'll be able to throw that on the notes and get it out to everyone. Um, and in the meantime, cool. if you just want to search for an MPA and you search for Shark Sanctuary, they're all listed there. 
Very cool. Thank you. So, I hope people um, love that. Thanks. <laughs> when, when that layer is launched, um, send the link to tip. Uh, send the link to tips, and we'll get it out um, to the participants here. Awesome. Thank you guys so much. That's a very cool resource. And it sounds like somebody else just unmuted. Go ahead. Nope. Totally still muted. Um, let's see. Who else is on the line? Um, hey, this is Jim Wharton from the Seattle Aquarium. Hey, Jim. Hey, we, are, we don't have anything that's going to be hitting on Shark Week exactly. A couple of weeks ago, we did our own Shark Week trying to separate it from the actual stuff called Wild Shark. So we, we did that a little bit, but this week we'll mostly are trying to activate our teen program because they're very active on social media, trying to direct them towards the, the shows that have high science content and trying to emphasize that, that building of, of positive energy around sharks. So there's so much, like you guys have noted, just excitement about Shark Week um, that you hate to squelch it by, by you know, trying to play the science police too much. But I think it's I, building on some of that energy, finding a, a happy medium in there is, is important. That's really cool. I love that you said play the science police. That's a good way to explain uh, the, the challenges of trying to balance out getting good science-based information out there um, and you know, not sounding like a buddy-duddy. Um, we're not saying it's easy. Um, so, are there, is there anything in particular that you're doing with your team program? That sounds really interesting. Well, we've got, we're going to try to pull a couple of watch parties together. We've been promoting alien sharks a lot. Um, mm -hmm. That's the one that, uh, that's been, I think, is, is one of the most important shows because it's one of the few sort of um, bastions of, of diversity that we get on, on Shark Week. So we managed to connect with, uh, with Paul Clerkin, and, and he, we're going to try to connect him with our teens after that. Uh, which we're trying to push the diversity angle as much as we can. I love it. And is anybody else um, hosting a watch party or know of any going on? I've heard of a couple that might be happening on the East Coast, but I haven't gotten any um, definites yet. And I'm totally looking for ones that are happening in San Francisco. Anybody else planning a, a watch party? Hi, this is Andrew, um, Online Ocean Symposium. I know that Vicki uh, from uh, Ocean Research Foundation is still trying to find a good location to watch alien sharks and have a viewing of that in San Francisco. So if you know of a place and you know, get in contact with her or have an idea, uh, you know, we can help set that up real quick. Awesome. And um, David Schuffman uh, in the last Shark and I suggested uh, that he had in the past gotten together viewing parties at sports bars, which I love. That's a, such a brilliant idea. They're obviously already set up with television and you know beer and stuff. Um, so he said they had yeah. an advanced conversation and got that set up. Go ahead. There's a there's an issue with San Francisco, and I don't want to uh, deal with uh, that in this conversation. <laughs> no worries. That's fine. Anybody else have watch parties going on the East Coast? Or anywhere else, like Atlanta? Hi, this is Rachel with the Dragon Con Science Trust. Um, hey. We don't exactly have a watch party going on, but we're going to have a kickoff party um, at one of the Atlanta professional theaters on Saturday called Smirk Week. Hmm. Awesome. This is going to be a lot Definitely. of fun. Definitely. Send us a link. Yes, I will. That should be really cool. I don't know how to remove myself. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. Um, does anybody have anybody on their team or on their staff or even just in their network that they know um, is, is good at science and social media? Um, and is planning on doing live coverage of any of the shows? Um, anybody that sh we should make sure is on our science influencer list, including yourself. You can you can name yourself. It's fine. <laughs> I'm going to put it in the chat too. 
Awesome. Well, um, if there's any last things, um, feel free to raise your hands um, or put them in the chat, and we'll make sure um, we get them mentioned as we close things out. Um, Jim, oh, I'll unmute you, Deb. Um, and Jim uh, is asking about the Twitter handle Shark University, which sounds really cool. Definitely have to check that out. And Deb, I am unmuting you. There you go, Deb. You're unmuted. I might have to unmute unmute myself. I'm here. (laughs) There you go. (laughs) Okay. Um, I just wanted to say we have something um, that is kind of exciting. Um, We have um, our director of expeditions and photography right now is out in the Channel Islands. Uh, There are two boats out there doing shark diving with a whole bunch of shark experts. And we can put the link. um, We'll give you the link, Rachel, so you can get it out. it's the Pelagic Research and Conservation Project for Isla del Coco and Shark mm-hmm. Conservation Initiatives in the Eastern Pacific. And um, then, af- so they're going to come in from the Channel Islands, and then on Monday in Los Angeles at Marina del Rey, there'll be a press conference, and then there's going to be a whole symposium, shark symposium going on all day. And then there's going to be a huge shark party Monday night, and that's in Los Angeles. And it's going to be in the hangar where, oh, I'm drawing a blank. It's going to be in a big airline hangar, big famous airline hangar. But mm-hmm. we can, um, I'll send you the link. It's free to go to the party if anybody's from L.A. or you have friends. Um, we'd like to get as many people there as we possibly can. So it should be a real blast. It's um, the person behind it is Francesca von Habsburg um, from the Habsburg family. So it, it should mm-hmm. be a real blast. She is a complete shark lover. Um, Amazing. That's yeah. Awesome. So I'll be down there, and Kip will be down there, and we're going to have a sharky blast. Yay! Definitely send us a link, and um, we'll see if we can help amplify the media that's coming out of it and get some area people um, to the event. Really fun. Great. Um, and uh, Rebecca, if you have successfully unmuted, hop on in. Hey, this is Rebecca. You guys can hear me? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Hi. This is Rebecca from Greenpeace. Um, we are doing a, we talked about it last time. We're doing a big Shark Week campaign um, in our. Most of it is going to be yay sharks, of course, and then um, we are having a petition um, specifically about shark finning that we're also going to be promoting. But we have a challenge, Rachel, that we wanted to talk about because we actually experimented with live tweeting Sharknado, as you know, and Mm -hmm. we noticed a time zone challenge around when things are airing. Um, yep. because we have offices on the East Coast and I'm on the West Coast. So we weren't sure, w- should we do both? Should we do just the East Coast? Would, that's kind of our question. Great question. Um, and uh, I'm going to go from recollection here, and Matt and Ray definitely hop in um, if I'm off track from current data. But um, it's my recollection that most of the spike happens um, in the, the Eastern time slot. Um, there is some spike on the West Coast. There's kind of a rebump when they air on the West Coast. Um, and often when we live tweet shows, we'll just like settle in for that evening and go from the East Coast start times of the shows, um, go all the way through that, and then do the, um, the West Coast as well. Um, if you have to pick one, I think probably go um, in – with the East Coast if it's feasible, but um, there are some challenges and some work around. Uh, obviously, if you're watching it on actual television, um, getting the program lined up to live tweet at the right time where you are is not the easiest thing. Um, and Andrew, you had some ideas about that. Hop on in here. Start having to unmute. Hi, yeah. Um, I don't know how many of you were paying attention to other uh, relatively scientific programming like uh, when Cosmos was going on. They had huge uh, conversations around Cosmos through the hashtag Cosmos or watching Cosmos. And they actually had uh, tweets set up specifically for 
East Coast, West Coast, and Central, just to try to bring in all those demographics when they're watching it. Um, I think that there's a lesson in there, and you know, it kind of speaks to scheduling versus trying to make what you're trying to push specific enough so you know that it's relating to a certain segment of the show, but kind of generic enough so that it doesn't matter on the specific timing. Um, but you know, personally, uh, from my perspective, just off the lesson from Cosmos, trying to hit up you know three separate time zones specifically for the American audience. Um, is not to be out, uh, ruled out. It's tricky, but um, <laughs> oh, Jim, uh, Jim saying the West Coast is their audience, and that's when they tweet. That's totally awesome, and I'm jealous of you having your audience in just one time zone. Um, if, if you're lucky enough to have that, congratulations. If you have your your audience, your television time zone all lined up, that's fantastic. Um, I know that um, Ken from Monterey Bay Aquarium is on the phone. Are, are you still on Fabulous Aquarium people? If you are, feel free to hop in because I know you have lots of really great shark resources. Um, and I want to go back a little bit in the chat and make sure that um, I share the rest of, um, I mentioned uh, Jim Morton suggested following Shark University on Twitter. Um, and that's Paul Corkin from Alien Sharks, which is pretty great. So we'll make sure that that gets into the notes um, and added to our list. Um, hurry for science tweeters. All right. Um, I'm going to pass back uh, to Ray to close us out. If you have more things that you really must share, we totally want to hear them. Um, and we want to make sure that we get all of those good campaigns and tips into the Shark Week toolkit to keep that updated. Um, so for, feel free to chat them in. And I'll pass it back to Ray. Thank you. Um, thanks, everybody, for joining us. Um, I just want to reiterate that um, we uh, have the toolkit on, uh, on our blog. And if you have anything that you want us to include, um, links or uh, images or anything like that, send it to tips at upwell.us, and we'll try to get it in there. And um, follow the Twitter list. All of that is on the toolkit as well. And if you aren't already subscribed to the Tide Report, um, I'm shocked, but uh, you can still sign up any day you want to um, by going to upwell.us slash Tide Report. Um, so let's see. What else do we miss here? Uh, yeah, so just resources. Uh, and we <coughs> We did record this, and we also recorded the last one. Both recordings will be linked in the toolkit. Um, and if you have any other resources you want to share with each other, you can continue to use the Shark in our hashtag. Um, but if not, start using Shark Week and save sharks and, and start getting the word out. Um, thanks for joining, and have a great Shark Week. We'll see you all on the Internet during the evening next week. Bye-bye. Thanks, everybody.